Hello, and welcome to Exposition, a podcast produced by the Division of Social and Human Sciences, Northeast Campus, Tarrant County College. Prepare to be engaged, enlightened, and informed. Today's topic... Um, Hello, welcome to Watch Wisely. Um, Our topic today is the movie Selma. I am one of your hosts and the namesake of this podcast, Dr. Karen Wisely. I teach history here at Tarrant County College, Northeast Campus. Joining me, my co-host. Hi, I'm Samantha Elkins, also a history instructor here up at TCC Northeast Campus. As is our custom. I am going to introduce this movie topic by reading the log line or brief description of the film and then go over the main cast members and where you may have seen them before. (laughs) This type of information always helps me when I'm watching a movie, so I hope it helps you as well. The log line for Selma, a chronicle of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s campaign to secure equal voting rights via an epic march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama in 1965. Okay, it seems weird to center this particular movie around MLK when he wasn't even at the initial Selma march, (laughs) but it's a movie. Um, The movie stars David Oyelowo (laughs) as Martin Luther King Jr. And honestly, he didn't have a whole lot of, of... roles that he had played before this he was mainly a stage actor in britain and so um i can't even tell you very many other things that he's been in but oh yeah he's a british guy playing dr martin luther king jr um speaking of british people carmen ajogo as coretta scott king um you may know her as i do as the american minister of magic seraphina pickery in (laughs) fantastic beasts and where to find them and yet another brit playing an american uh speaking of tom wilkinson stars as lyndon johnson you may remember him from our very first episode the patriot where he played british leader cornwallis Mm. Another Brit playing an American. Where are all the American actors? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I guess they're all in Marvel movies. I don't know. Um, There are a bunch of other people portrayed in this film. Pretty much anybody who's anybody in the civil rights movie is in this film for about 3.5 seconds. Um, (laughs) I I felt the need to mention Stephen James, who uh, played John Lewis, who was at the front of the line of protesters in Selma, Mm -hmm. so kind of important. Um, You probably know him um, for playing Jesse Owens in the movie Race, or um, if Beale Street could talk, or in Twenty One Bridges, which is a really intense movie starring Chad Bozeman, Chadwick Bozeman. Um, finally, um, there's Oprah Winfrey as <laughs> Annie Lee Cooper, the lady trying to register to vote towards the beginning, who punches the um, uh, is sheriff. And uh, if you don't know where you've seen her before, I suggest that you try to crawl out from under the rock that you've been living in (laughs) under for, I don't know, 30, 40 years, something like that. Um, She's Oprah freaking Winfrey. That's who she is. Um, Yeah, she really, come on, you know who she is. Um, Selma was directed by Ava DuVernay and was released in 2014. It had two Oscar nominations for Best Picture, um, which it did not win. It was beaten by Birdland, which I I hated that movie. (laughs) (laughs) And um, it was nominated for Best Original Song, Glory, and Common and John Legend won for that one. Um, So I think John Legend is an EGOT winner, I think. Yeah. So, um, anyway, that is Selma. So, so Samantha, what did you think? <laughs> I um, I I liked the film. Mm-hmm. I I remember just I enjoyed it in that it wasn't. So often we sanctify like MLK and everything yeah. like that. So it was kind of nice that they didn't do that. I wish 
they had done that a little bit more, but that's one of my favorite things in history is to be like, oh, let's debunk all the myths of history. <laughs> like that, that's like, if you've ever taken any of my classes, I'm like, okay, let's talk about how this is wrong. Yeah. So it's kind of, I am not surprised to see that they still didn't go as far as I mm -hmm. personally would have liked. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I was really impressed with is that it's kind of a problem in that they they didn't do it enough, but I was impressed that they at least talked about it wasn't just MLK. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. much we, we like to be like, oh, civil rights, MLK. Yeah. And that's the only person. And we always like to have these moments in history and Maybe it's because we have, I mean, in many ways, it's almost a biopic mm -hmm. for MLK more so than it is it, it, about Selma. Selma. Yeah, yeah, it, and that that was that was part of what I found to be problematic. Um, mm -hmm. I expected a movie about Selma to <laughs> focus to, on to, Selma? Fo to focus on Selma and the and and that and and there was a lot of of variation from that and things that were added that. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Selma, yeah. the march in Selma happened in 1965, and they show the those four girls being blown up in in Birmingham, and that happened two years before yeah. that. And and it was like, well, what does time mean? I I didn't mind that as much. I, I saw a lot of complaints about that, like because mm -hmm. uh, I did research on like, oh, that's historically accurate and inaccurate, and they're like, oh, you know, this isn't really then. And I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of setting the stage of where are we in the civil rights movement? What sure. are they fighting for? But at the same time, I'm like, I feel like everyone kind of knows that uh -huh. almost. I, I don't know if they needed to set the stage yeah. per se. But I, I could see definitely, like, if you were, like, going into it going, oh, man, this is happening in Selma. And it's like, no, that's happening in Birmingham. Yeah. That's and, not even Selma. Well, and also they kind of made it seem, um, because of where they put it right mm -hmm. before the that first big meeting between MLK and LBJ, which I know you have some things to tell me about. <laughs> yes, I have words. <laughs> but they were making it seem like the explosion happened after the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Yeah, and when it didn't. Yeah, and, and that he was then using that as, see, this is why we need voting rights. Yes, that's true. So, yeah. You know, like, like it didn't solve these things. So this is why we need voting rights. This is why we need to do this. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, that happened two years ago before yeah. the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And, you know. There's other things yeah. that they could have pointed to. Yeah, they could have. Saying, yeah. oh, okay, yeah, we got the Civil Rights Act, but hey, we need voting rights yeah, yeah and especially like focused a little bit more on the vote as an issue there uh -huh. too because that is the focus of the film right and i'll admit yeah that that first opening scene with the bombing of the birmingham church and everything and the four little girls which i knew it was coming i'm like watching mm -hmm. and going oh no oh no <laughs> Oh, no. And I know what's happening. And surprisingly, my husband's watching me with me. He's like, what's going to happen? And I'm like, you don't know? Well, I mean, I was like, I was like, why is there seven of them? You know? <laughs> Not only four oh, of them. And then three of them kind of hung back. And I was like, oh, oh okay. You know? And, uh, yeah, it, it was, um, it, and it was very abrupt. I mean, yeah. the, the, yeah. Yeah. No, they, they could have done that better, chosen a better moment. Because, like, the whole, like, scene with Oprah Winfrey, whatever, what is her character name? Annie oh Mae. Annie Mae. Um, I'm sorry. Annie She's Mae. Oprah. I see her, and I'm like, it's Oprah. Um, it's Annie Mae. Which, uh, we apologize. We do this every single Annie episode. Annie Lee Cooper. I'm yeah, sorry. Annie Lee Cooper. Annie Lee like, Cooper. Yeah. Um, her trying to register to vote, like, that mm -hmm. really set the stage more so with the issue being on voting rights. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was the yeah, really I thought that key was scene. A really important scene. Yeah. 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 About how obviously oh this gosh. wasn't the first time she'd been there. Yeah. Obviously, uh, you know, she she knew the answer to the last one that they stumped her with, and then they, you know, name them. I was just, name yeah. sixty. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So that, that scene, that was done really, really well, yeah. really to see those literacy mm -hmm. tests and how far they went just, yeah. yeah. And how they had already determined she would lose. Yeah. 
she would fail before she even walked in the door. And yeah, so that was, you know, I, I, I like that scene. I like the scene even in front of the, the courthouse, you know, when they were like, uh, you can't wait here. You have to, you know, go Run somewhere else or, yeah, or whatever. And, and, and all of them, you know, like kneeling or sitting and which that's and, not accurate. No, they didn't do that, but I liked it because yeah. it showed the types of protests they mm -hmm. were doing. Mm -hmm. It's that, um, and, and yeah. being nonviolent yeah, and, you know, yeah. just sitting and, and then the violence that is mm -hmm. visited upon them. Yes. Um, I thought that was that was great. Um, I just the thing that bothers me about this, beside aside from the, <laughs> all the British people, <laughs> which don't they have history of their own that they can? <laughs> uh, I mean, like I, I studied over there. Like yeah, like, there's from what I English understand, history, there's some sure. British history. <laughs> Just a little um, bit of it. I don't really pay attention to it. It doesn't really, it isn't anything that I'm interested in, but I think there's things, you know, I, I don't know. And, and it isn't like, I, I don't expect British people to act in American movies or anything like that. It's just that it's always like iconic, historic yes. figures in American history that, that are like some Brit. And what I didn't like, if we can nitpick yeah. for just a second. <laughs> yeah, we can nitpick. The Georgia accent, because Martin Luther <laughs> King Jr. is from Atlanta, right? Mm. That's where he was born and raised and all of that. Mm -hmm. The Georgia accent is lighter. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little twang, kind of. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. there's a... It isn't, yeah. it isn't as oppressive as the way that he was mm -hmm. doing it. And he talks so slow. And... Martin Luther King Jr. did it wasn't like that, no. so he wasn't. You know, I would it would it kind of took me out of it. I was mm -hmm. like, why is he talking so damn slow? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and it was it was uh, it was a little posed all yeah. of it, like the the whole movie like it had almost a shine to it that uh -huh. it took out took you out of it because it made it look like all shiny on the surface like how all the conversations nobody uh -huh. goes um or they, yeah, there's no yeah. oh gosh rhetoric yeah that was almost colloquial uh -huh. or so like right. it was all yeah. too pretty yeah 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 and i think that's the problem yeah that like oh okay they take him down a step they don't sanctify him mm-hmm but we only went down one step when we really yeah. needed to go down like five steps and like look at these people as people, mm -hmm. as not just individuals, but as a group and just, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just think that maybe some of the nuances of, mm -hmm. of accent, some of the nuances of colloquialism, some of those kind of things would come with casting people <laughs> who actually live in this freaking country um you know and grew up in this country yeah. and maybe grew up in the south you know and who actually know a little bit more about it than um, well and i'd like to see just an african-american representing the african-american community a little bit more mm -hmm. like that it, yeah. and so it's kind of a bummer when you're going oh there's another british guy yeah representing that fight that battle and mm -hmm. that I, I that know. they were not involved in at all yeah yeah yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, it is nitpicky. Yeah. And overall, <laughs> um, you know, I mean. I, I don't think say. it's going to bother probably your average <laughs> no, viewer. No. So don't don't not no. watch the movie. I'd still no. recommend watching the movie. <laughs> no, it is not going to. It's just things that I was thinking about when I was watching it. And uh, that's, you know. Um, I think um, the thing that bothered me was like, yes, they were showing that it isn't just Martin Luther King. And they mm -hmm. did that by a parade of the other oh, civil yeah. rights icons, but it never really tells what are they doing? You yeah. Know? <laughs> it's no, like, and unless you knew the background of these individual people, you didn't even know what groups they were representing yeah, per se. Yeah. And like, it showed that like, oh, okay, it wasn't one 100% cohesive movement. They have all these mm -hmm. other different sectors within the civil rights movement, yeah. and they all have different ideas on what they're supposed to do. And I liked seeing that. 
but it wasn't very clear on like who they were. No, no, there was that one scene that seemed manufactured to bring more civil rights people, mm. civil rights icons in, and that was that scene at at that woman's house mm. where he was like, "Oh, this is." Ralph Abernathy, this is, <laughs> blah, 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 you know, and it's like, Let's thank you for introducing drop. all of them. Now, we're never going to see them again in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Except for the very ending yeah. where he goes, oh, hey, let's tell you what this guy did. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and, the, and the, uh, the one that probably has me most, um, like, irritated about it was, <laughs> was Bayard Rustin. Oh, really? Yeah, because he doesn't even get to be in that <laughs> house, right? No, we only nope. know it's Bayard Rustin because he picks up the phone and calls MLK's hotel room <laughs> and said, turn on CBS right now. And, and they they turn around and say, Bayard's on the phone. And it's <laughs> like, oh, that's supposed to be Bayard Rustin. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think I even picked up on that at all. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and – you know, this is a personal crusade of mine and has been. And uh, um, Bayard Rustin needs more respect. Yeah. People need to know what that man did. And and people also need to know why he doesn't get the notoriety and the respect. Um, so it, it is a personal crusade of mine. And, and, and that was like, seriously, that's all he gets is, mm -hmm. is like Bayard's on the phone. Is the only is only mentioned in the movie. So, yeah. um, I think the biggest problem with Selma was that it tried to cover too much. Yeah, and in doing so, it kind of belittled all of it. Yeah, I, I read an article. It was what year was it released? Is it was it two thousand fourteen? Mm -hmm. And um, they said uh, in the article it said in in the year two thousand ten there were exactly zero. Uh, movies that were released about the uh, African American experience, mm -hmm. and um, and then in the intervening years from 2011, 2012 to mm -hmm. 13 and 14, um, there had been you know a few very good ones like 20, 12 Years a Slave, mm -hmm. and and you know those that were like Academy Award worthy and, and, and all of that. And and so I guess because there had been um like a desert where there weren't any, mm -hmm. they were like, Okay, you get to you get to make this movie about the civil rights movement and they're like, We have to include everything yeah. and everyone and, you know, timeline mm -hmm. be damned. It's it's you know um and and that as a as a history professor is a little um I don't, I don't want to say annoying, but it is like, wait, what is happening? It's upsetting. <laughs> it's sad. We, <laughs> we, we were laughing as we came in. We were like, man, they could have made this a trilogy and yeah. really like fleshed out a lot more of the characters and everything like that. And yeah. yeah. I'm like, if they can make The Hobbit a trilogy. Sur seriously, it's one book. <laughs> I mean, my God. <laughs> and, and I do think that like – you know, and again, I don't know if this is the content that everyone's looking for, but there's so much rich content yeah. in the civil rights movement that could have movies made of them. Oh, yeah. And, and like, Martin Luther King Jr. doesn't have – there's no movie just about him, a biopic yeah. about Martin Luther King Jr. I, Which that, is – how? Kind of like, how is – how are we at this point? Yeah. We're in 2023, and we don't have a biopic about, about MLK? MLK. I mean, I I don't understand what we're waiting for. Mm -hmm. and, it, and you know, there's so many things about his life. Yeah, and and how much does the average person know about his how he was raised and, yeah. and all of that? I mean, all of these things would be really interesting. Um, there's there has, and by the way, just back on that for a second if they do mm -hmm. like hollywood if you're listening if you make a <laughs> biopic of mlk and and cast a british actor to play oh. him <laughs> please don't i you will get a strongly worded letter from me <laughs> I, promise you that. I mean i will watch it because of course i will but yes. i will not be happy about it and um i will complain yeah a lot. Um, 
And then we'll watch it and yeah. talk about it here. Yes, we will. <laughs> and complain more about it. Um, but, uh, you know, the, it's it's just there's so many things. I mean, John Lewis's life yeah. as well. Um, uh, you know, he lived a, a long and very uh, productive and effective life. Um, and, and how many times, like, he was talking... It, his character, the character of John Lewis in that movie was talking about how many times he had been in a situation where he got the absolute crap beaten out of him. Mm-hmm. And to know that he goes on and serves in the House of Representatives yeah. and, and dies in, what, 2020? Um, yeah, that was the year that, uh, yeah. Um, and uh, and in, in his 80s, so, uh, you know, there's a life that probably needs a biopic. Yeah. Um, and, and Coretta Scott King. Yeah, no, I, that was honestly, this is, I think, one of the biggest disservices they did in the entire film was by trying to cover everything they didn't cover enough. Mm-hmm. And black women's role in the movement is definitely like oh okay you get like oprah winfrey's character and you get the, all those like yeah. little moments yeah. and everything a really big but, scene but but then there's like nothing yeah. after that mm-hmm. and then they really only look at mlk's wife as mlk's wife right and nothing else yeah and she was an activist yeah. in her own right yes yeah and so it was it is very frustrating because i was like going literally i'm watching it and i'm like where are the women yeah. Where where are the women? Like I'm literally mm-hmm. looking around the screen and like right as I said that, then they have like the one moment that those two characters talk and then they like never talk again the rest of the film. Mm. And it was just kind of disappointing for me in that way. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. And and definitely, you know, because women were such a big part of the civil yes. rights movement. We, there needs to be um, more about them. Yeah. Um, we also need um, uh, to understand that, yeah, uh, the portrayal of MLK may not be the greatest because his family did not approve of this. Oh, and yeah. they did not offer any help. And, in fact, they did not allow them to use his actual speeches. Yeah, they had to rewrite yeah. different portions of speeches and everything like that mm-hmm. for it. Because I remember watching yeah. it going, this isn't this. Yeah, no, what? that sounds like a different speech yeah, that like, he was making. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, so uh, it's it, that may be why um, Coretta Scott King didn't get mm-hmm. um, her due in that yeah. one. Um, and... You know, it's it's there's a big huge difference when when the family supports a movie and when it doesn't, mm-hmm. and and what you're allowed to use and and that kind of thing. So, um, that that might be some of the problem. And um, yes. um, although I should mention mm-hmm. when you're talking about families supporting the film, uh-huh. uh, after this came out, there was a lot of backlash from uh, George Wallace's. <laughs> family saying oh this isn't who he was at all and i was like uh no if anything he was worse (laughs) so um no uh they technically they leave out with the whole assassination everything of george wallace at the end and he finds jesus oh supposedly that like made him go oh you know i was wrong about all these race relations and everything and it's like no you decided to change your mind when you realized black people could vote mm-hmm. in your state yeah like so i thought they did a good job with him and if anything they could have probably taken it a little farther okay he probably didn't actually want the like specifically say hey you should do this violence and everything yeah. like that that didn't necessarily 100 yeah. percent happen but i don't know that that yeah <laughs> i I want to hear your your LBJ, oh. if you may. <laughs> okay, so um, here's the thing. LBJ, I'm, and this may be a shock to some people, um, LBJ is probably my favorite president, which I grew up in a family of smart Alex, and so, um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, always just really appreciated some of his uh, candor and humor and everything. Um, yeah, no, I totally understand. Didn't do a great job with that whole Vietnam War thing. (laughs) 
But one thing I've always loved about LBJ is his he's a huge supporter of civil rights. I mean, he was a teacher down in Texas. He specifically taught a lot of Mexican-Americans. So he literally saw what, like, segregation did firsthand. And just as a teacher, I, I just that makes me really happy to hear about a teacher becoming president. I don't know. that I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, not that I want to be president by any means. Uh, please do not. Anyway, um, and so I was really frustrated, like, watching the film at the very beginning. It has these early scenes that it's LBJ talking to MLK, and he's kind of bullying almost mm-hmm. to MLK, which, to be fair, LBJ was kind of a bully in a very specific political way. Uh-huh. But, like, the way he talks to him, he almost is talking down to him, like, no, you're not going to do that. And, like, this is more important than civil rights and everything. And I'm like, what? That? No. <laughs> that's not wait what and so i'm like looking it up later just checking like am i totally off base and like no that was actually one of the biggest complaints people had about this Mm -hmm. movie is that that relationship that relationship actually was really respectful and i actually this morning listened to a recording Mm -hmm. of a phone conversation between lbj and mlk and that's what i laughed about the rhetoric oh my gosh that phone conversation the whole time lbj is like um um um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, spit it out, man. Um, which is weird for me to think with LBJ because that's not yeah. who I think of him at that. Yeah. And like, he really supported the civil rights movement. And he actually came up with, we have specific recordings that um, are in the LBJ library, which if you ever get a chance to go to, go to it. Um, that he um, gives ideas actually on like what the civil rights movement can do to mm-hmm. further their cause and everything. And so it was very frustrating watching the film. They kind of put him in this place of an adversary uh-huh. to the civil rights movement. And I'm like, but he wasn't. But uh-huh. I will say this. As much as I was frustrated by that personally, uh-huh. I didn't, at the end of the day, I didn't mind too, too much. Like, I was I was mad as, like, my own personal, like, I like LBJ. Yeah, yeah. But if they had included him adding ideas and really adding to the movement, it would have felt like that trope, the white, the white savior. savior. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, do you think so, that they did that because of that? I think that might maybe be because, why. Because I haven't listened to the recordings because I'm not quite as... <laughs> I, look, I don't want to say obsessed, but I'm not quite as, um, you know. Uh, look, so, I went to the LBJ library and I full on sobbed there just looking at all the stuff about civil rights and... <laughs> LBJ involvement in the civil rights. And my husband's like, I don't know you. And walks away from me. Like, so. I have, look, I have obsessions, but that isn't one of mine. Um, so I haven't listened to the, the, the recordings, but I, I, I do read quite a bit. Um, and, uh, to be fair, it's it, only one recording I listen and, to. So and far. isn't it, um, isn't it true that, like, uh, you know, that y- you said that they would, like, collaborate on things mm-hmm. and say, here's what you can do. So I could totally see a, the, a reality where LBJ is like, look, I've used all the political capital I have. Yeah. Um, I can't push this through. You're going to have to help us. Yeah. And, and the way that happens is by putting your bodies on the line and mm-hmm. putting them in harm's way because that is going to create fervor. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think they took a little uh, license there, yeah. and and it probably was to avoid the white yeah. savior trope. So I'm like, um, it's kind of like it's a personal issue mm-hmm. I have more so than a yeah. professional yeah. issue, um, especially because then LBJ has the great scene later on that he calls out George Wallace, and that was yeah. like, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. So I guess I guess I would say that my complaints about this film are are like about little things like yeah that. and and i know that you've said previously that you you, you have read the the quote that it oh, is I've got it right it's yeah. uh historically it's not historically accurate it is historically correct yeah and so the things that yeah. they the incidents that they put in there happened yeah they did and it it was as bad as it looked and in yes. and, and things were as dire as it was and people did lose their lives and people were beaten severely in in all of and all MLK of these things wasn't on the front lines in that particular yeah. march that we see just right. like in the film so they yeah they stayed true to the narrative in that way yeah um so 
so to wrap up then, uh, what we always say or what we always ask is, is this a good movie? Would you recommend this for your students to watch then? I, I, I really think I would, but I would just give them a warning. It's so much, the civil rights movement is so much more than this. Mm-hmm. This is, this is a drop in the bucket. Yeah. This is just a taste. Yeah. This is, this is supposed to whet your appetite to yeah. learn to more. To go and read books and books and books and books or because case. they haven't made them into movies yet. <laughs> I was going to say, in my case, start listening to recordings of the LBJ library. I did not expect that to come out of this film. But don't we have any, uh, like, burgeoning um, screenwriters in, yeah, in our uh, classes. Seriously. I mean, I feel like this would be, you know. I and, would love to see a mini series mm-hmm. for the civil rights movement because then yeah. you could really like, I don't know. I want them to go crazy. I want there to be like an HBO series about yes. COINTELPRO and all of the mischief that they did oh, in trying God. to ta- to stop all yeah. of the social movements of oh, the 1960s. Man. That would like, be amazing. Yeah. And it would be so, like, so much, like, dirt and stuff oh, gosh, that it would yes. just be so juicy that people would love to watch it. You oh, know? definitely. And, and so... That that's that's my <laughs> my wish. Um, okay, so what about you? How would you recommend this? And how how many owls are you gonna rate it on? Because I, I expect some uh, hoots in here. <laughs> um, I I do recommend it um, to my students, and I recommend it. You know, when we talk about voting rights, because of the scenes with Oprah Winfrey, because of the scenes mm-hmm. of the protest, because of the scenes on the bridge, and and all of that, um, that are true to it and, and not as much the, you know, the background storytelling of, uh, you know, LBJ and MLK and mm-hmm. all of that, but just the, nor the individual characters more the same. Yeah. The, the, the grassrootsness of it, uh, where they are actually trying to do something about voting rights. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I would probably give it, um, you know, uh, probably a four and a half owl yeah. rating. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and uh, are you going to make me hoot four and a half <laughs> time? I don't even know what a half hoot is. Um, but, we won't make uh, you do it this time, but maybe next right, time. Yeah, yeah I got I to gotta get that on the uh, on the uh, 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 board here so that I don't have to literally hoot myself. Um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I would give it a four and a half. I mean, the only problem, like I said, that I really have it with it is they're trying to cram everything into one movie. And, you know, let's make more movies about this stuff. Maybe yeah. maybe more movies about this. And I, I don't want to be controversial, but fewer movies about comic books. What? <laughs> I, I think that's a good place to end up on. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Then um, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you.